was a week that we dubbed as big for Norwich City's playoff hopes. Six points was the uh, target that I think we assigned to it. Well, Norwich City have delivered six points and they're now closing in on the top six in the championship. Welcome to this week's edition of the Pinkin.com Norwich City podcast in association with Future Radio. Coming to you after a 2-0 win at Carroll Road over struggling Cardiff. I'm your host, Connor Southwell, joined by uh, a very nice Midlands double act. I was trying to think of, of double acts that have come from the Midlands. But uh, I don't think there's too many, which is perhaps unsurprising. Paddy Davitt is uh, to my left. Samuel Seaman is to my right to reflect on uh, the victory over Cardiff. We'll also speak a little bit about the midweek win over Birmingham as well. Uh, but uh, Sam, I'm going to start with you this week, just to be a little bit different. Um, as I said there in, in, in the intro, really, I mean, we, we spoke about it last week and spoke after that Wigan draw and, and, and said it was a big week for Norwich City. Two games at Carroll Road, two, uh, two opportunities to pick up points. They've done that. Six points, seventh in the table. Suddenly it feels a little bit different to what it did a week ago. But that's that's championship football for you. Well, yeah, very differently indeed. And I'm feeling maybe that some of the things I said on the last podcast were a little bit premature because in the last two podcasts I think we've done after two um, very disappointing away games, we've diagnosed the need for a rebuild. And although I don't think those mid to long term concerns have completely been eradicated. Um you look at their playoff hopes for this season and they feel quite a lot more positive than they did this time a week ago. Um I was speaking to a few fans after the game today and the number of predictions I'm getting now that Norwich actually will scrape the playoffs and that it's very capable are totally different to if I'd spoken to people after that Bristol game or after that that Wigan game where there are very few few things to cling on to. The points gap wasn't actually that different to what it is now but the performances made the gap and the number of teams between Norwich and those playoff places feel so much bigger than it does now and you look at the way that they can perform and you do wonder why and what the reasons are behind the way that they've performed so far this season yes they've played um, Cardiff and Birmingham this week who aren't two of the teams competing for promotion necessarily but that's you know, the large majority of championship teams, to be honest. And against a lot of those, they've really struggled to find the results that they've needed to be in the position they want to be in the championship. So to see them actually consistently deliver has been really encouraging. For me, I think the fact that they were able to see out that game against Cardiff comfortably, not so much against Birmingham, but the game management they showed today, I think some were disappointed by perhaps the sterile nature of the second half and um, the lack of entertainment on offer but for me it was actually a good sign because this was the first time in a long while they felt like a team that knows how to win and a team that has winning in their DNA as opposed to a team who has talent but needs to bumble over the line when they've got into a good position so yeah it was a lot of encouraging elements today for me not the most exciting game of football I've ever watched but certainly a totally different situations to what they were in a week ago and as you said that sums up championship football and the fickle nature of football because things can change so quickly and thankfully for Norwich City they uh, they have over the last week. Yeah and it's it's interesting what you say there because actually I think across this season we've seen Norwich City probably be a little bit unable to put the sort of run that they're on at the moment together throughout the course of, of this campaign and actually Paddy I've got a league table here the championship league table since David Wagner took over uh, only Middlesbrough and Burnley have taken more points than Norwich City in those eight games um, only Burnley have, have, have scored the, the same amount of goals um, obviously conceded significantly fewer than Norwich City but 16 points in eight games that's two points per game that's the sort of uh, points rate that we do associate with promotion obviously over the course of a season I think I said a couple of pods ago in terms of the the pure maths around it it was going to require just over I think two points per game to get to the kind of points level that they needed to get into to, to break into the playoffs so given what they're doing at the moment and, and we'll come on to towards the end the big fortnight that they've got coming up but it's game on for Norwich City isn't it in terms of their playoff push all day long yeah I thought Sam's broken it down very well it, it's amazing how Epic, the, the emotional feel is around these games at the minute and and maybe that's the season in, in, in microcosm, what we've had where Bristol City, flat deflation, you know, Burnley kind of a resignation that they were so far adrift and even Wigan. And Wigan's a pertinent starting point for this discussion, I think, tonight because um, we're recording here Saturday evening, uh, go back to the previous Saturday evening and we're coming back from Wigan and it felt very flat 
and very deflating because, OK, they'd put a point on the board, but against the team who, by the end of that weekend, were bottom of the pile. And um, you thought, well, how, how if they can't get past this type of test and really were indebted to Angus Gunn on that occasion in the Northwest to get the, the point even, how can they possibly mount anything remotely resembling a, a realistic playoff charge? And we're now two further games on, two, two Cara Road games, six points in both both occasions very controlled overall um, scoring lots of goals creating lots of chances we'll be, get into the minutiae of what it is that's working well now in due course but you know you look across the midfield areas uh, that the attacking options they've got now um, and it, it does feel very different from Bristol City um, from Burnley from even Wigan uh, and maybe that's a cautionary tale that we can't really probably allow ourselves to lurch too far the other way and almost take for granted they're now in the top six because, and we'll get into it, I'm sure, coming around the corner is one very big game um, next week at Millwall, but but they're after Sunderland as well and they've got other teams around them in the current playoff picture to come between now and the end of the season. It's just finding that consistency and, and this week, you can't argue, you know, seven points from nine, ten points, I think Wagner packaged it from four um, and then you've called up that stat that's sort of suggesting that over the entirety of Wagner's championship tenure thus far albeit brief but um, it's a consistency that is very impressive and um, you know that bodes incredibly well Um, and for me I think they're only getting started as well and that's the exciting element you know if if they can navigate some of the the bigger tests to come um, in the same sort of confident fashion they played out the game this afternoon then you know you do realistically see them in the top six, um, and then of course they've got one in four shot of getting back to the Premier League. So um, you know, but small steps, and, and we've we've taken a few of those this week, definitely. But uh, it's still also it's worth stressing, you know, as we record this this evening, they're still outside the top six. So it shows you that almost his first objective was to make up the ground that was lost in the the, the final end of tenure of Dean Smith, and they've kind of probably done that now, but. They they're now going to have to not just keep pace with the Lutons, the Millwalls, the you know Bristol. Uh, oh, that's sorry. Yeah, I was we're looking at a, over the comparative of when he came in. I didn't think Bristol City were in the top six. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing quite well, not quite as well as that. But the Blackburns and and so on, uh, Watford. It's now about outstripping those clubs, and um, you know that that's another level from where they are, which is albeit two decent home wins this this week, but against fairly mediocre opposition. So I think we need to temper the rising expectation or rising optimism, but give them their due. You know, since Wagner's come in, he needed to have an immediate impact. He's had that. It's been a little bit bumpy, but now it looks like they're they're moving on the right path. Um, but we'll definitely find out more at Millwall next week. Yeah, and that that was kind that's kind of where I'm at now because it has been a, it has been a good week. I think they've done probably what we expected of them to do, as, as positive as it feels at this moment in time against teams who are languishing at the, at the wrong end of the table. Birmingham uh, in in a really bad way at the minute, and Cardiff, who uh, despite having a little bit of a bounce under Sabri Lamushi, um, are struggling as well and struggling in terms of goals. So. I think you're right, but actually probably the real test now begins. And actually that league table that we've got in front of us um, that kind of shows those eight games that David Wagner has overseen in comparison to the rest of the championship. The fact that Norwich have taken 16 points from those eight games and are still outside the top six shows how much ground that they've had to make up. And I guess a lot of the season and a lot of the discussions that we've had in recent weeks about rebuilds and um, about uh, kind of where Norwich City found themselves was based on feeling and the feeling that this Norwich City team created and that inability to string results together. And I guess from David Wagner's perspective, Sam, that's what makes this week so productive because, and and I guess this block of four games really so productive because even though perhaps the performances haven't been great, it weren't weren't by any means great. So I think Kenny McLean described it as professional rather than than positive performance. And obviously the the last weekend at Wigan, we we dissected that and it wasn't particularly great. But to take 10 points from four games, it's something that we haven't seen this Norwich City team do for a considerable period of time, winning at home as well. It's it's what I describe as gradual improvement. It's just changing the, the trends ever so slightly. And it's about whether they can do that to a rate that gets them in the top six, I guess, from from here. Yeah, how many times in the last few weeks have we mentioned the word consistency? It was almost becoming boring for 
those that consume our well, content. Well, it's better than, what is it, fundamentally or context <laughs> or whatever we usually get shouted out for. But, so. uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, it's it, it was a massive glaring issue and one that was almost so obvious you had to dig into it to before before even mentioning it. Um, and now, just when everybody was calling on them to show it, they have. And, you know, that shows the, the ability of this group and this club to be able to turn things around. I was reminded um, earlier today of the first two Daniel Farker years and although it's happened in a shorter space of time that 2017-18 season there were positive signs and there were times when Norwich fans were looking at it feeling optimistic about what could be in store for the club in future and then the next season just as they were underdogs and nobody really believed they could push for promotion they went and dominated the league and the difference between that was consistency so you see how how big that is and I think in this Norwich group before we've seen what they're capable of. Even under Dean Smith, it was rare, but we have seen before that they can pull off big wins and that there can be moments of individual brilliance from talented players. And the fact that they've now put it together for consecutive games shows that they could go on that sort of run. If it's not this season, then they'll back themselves to be able to produce on a regular basis next season when the goal will again be championship promotion if they can't achieve it um, this term. So... Yeah, I think it's really encouraging to see that they're able to reproduce that on a regular basis. They've also dealt with setbacks now, so it's not just like they're riding the wave of momentum or the old cliche of a new manager bounce. They've had that crushing loss to Burnley, um, that drab draw with Wigan, and they've managed to roll with those punches and deal with those blows and recover and discover the, the form that they've now found in recent games. So I think there are plenty of signs of the positive character traits you want to see in a team that can be promoted from the championship of course there's a long way to go now and I think a few games ago we would have been reminding ourselves that there probably will still be positive signs and to not get carried away and as much as we have to now sit here and and say that it wasn't good to get carried away with the idea that everything was bad with Norwich we probably shouldn't be sitting here thinking that everything's good because if it was they would be top of the championship and if they were capable of producing this sort of performance and this sort of result on a week in week out basis they would be competing with Burnley for automatic promotion and for the championship title so I do still think there's going to be hardships between now and the end of the season it's not for me like they're going to go on a significant winning run Um, but the fact that They've shown they can now come from those bad moments and reproduce sort of short winning runs because it doesn't always have to be eight, ten game winning runs. If you can put together five or six, three game winning runs throughout the season, that puts you in a really good um, position. So, yeah, I think the the signs are good um, in the short and mid term, uh, but it's still going to take plenty of work this season. And there probably will still be times where we say promotion isn't likely, but right now it certainly feels possible and that's more than we could have said um, a couple of weeks ago absolutely it's it's an interesting point you make on durability because David Wagner has spoken about this as well and I think we've all seen it this season that this Norwich City team uh, before maybe the the last few games when faced with adversity and um, and it's come in all sorts of different forms across the the whole campaign have really struggled to to contend with that and actually what's been positive about this week Paddy is that they've had it in different ways they fell behind um, in, 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 no it was Hull they fell behind wasn't it I'm getting the game wrong but they, they fell behind against Hull um, they had a difficult opening 15 minutes today where earlier on in the season they may well have fell behind uh, it, it feels like there's a a kind of yeah, for for want of a better word, more durability about them and a, a more bounce back ability to them. There's this ability maybe that that I guess that goes with David Wagner, doesn't it? And praise for him in terms of what he's been able to install in in a relatively short period of time. I mean, at the moment, as we said, since he took charge, it's it's two points per game. If Norwich maintain that, and and they 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 may well do, they may well not. Um, but if they do maintain that, they will be in the playoffs come the end of the season. So, I guess that that shift that we've seen in terms of their mentality and how they stand up to things and what they've done over the last week or, or two weeks is probably a testament to the sort of culture and the work that he's put in in, in his eight, opening eight games in charge. Well, I mean, the fact that he publicly went a, along that path, that was very revealing and that was about a week or so ago now, maybe a little bit longer, 10 days or so, that he'd identified those flaws um, 
collectively and individually, and that if they had to stand any chance, they had to be better in those moments of adversity. He talked about being affected. Did he did add it? You know, they got affected adversely when they went in front as well. I mean, mm. reference the Coventry game when they were so dominant early on, and then bang bang, and, and a game that should have been out of sight became a little bit uh, uncomfortable at least until the, that he got them in at half time at Coventry. But the fact that he'd he'd identified that to me, it's almost tantamount to saying in terms of the ability in this squad or the talent or the quality or the potential, he doesn't feel there's any issues there whatsoever. He, it, the raw material is there, but it was that imperceptible quality that all promotional sort of contending sides need to have, that you aren't ha- going to have everything your own way. Not Burnley won't. Burnley now looks so, such a dominant force, um, but there will be points during the season, early on in the season, where... It didn't all go their way, and they had to fight and and come through that, and uh, and they managed to do it. And the two times Norwich got promoted under Farker in this division didn't always, although it maybe in the end looked quite dominant, wasn't always the case. They they had their moments of self doubt, I'm sure, and and they came through. And and whether that's you know a character thing, whether that's you know a mentality thing, but. You know, it it was hitherto. We know we've 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 all sort of experienced it at close quarters this season. It was a very bruising, um, turbulent season uh, until they made the change managerially. And I think it's it's effectively they've changed manager, changed coach. It's still the same group of players, and to expect them to park all that baggage that they might have had, and 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 are we good enough? Can we get in the mix? Was probably unrealistic. And and I think those were the vestiges that Wagner was referring to when he when he first came in, in the building. But he kept it to himself. They obviously started up in fine fashion, the Preston win, the Coventry win. But then when they started to get a setback or two, he went public with that. And credit to them. You talked about going behind against um, Hull. But even in the Birmingham game last couple of days ago, there they were 2-0 and, and looking very comfortable. Then Birmingham get back into it. Uh, and and there was a period there where you thought, well, this could go the other way again. But they rode through that um, without too many alarms, I didn't think. And it was the same today. You know, Cardiff inevitably made triple change at the break. They had to try and do something to, to alter the flow of that game. One or two scares, nothing untoward. But it, it was a very well-managed second half from Norwich that, again... When there was a little bit of adversity, they thought, no, um, we've faced this down in recent games. And, and that shift that needed to happen is starting to happen. But again, you know, as a, as a common theme through this podcast, we just have to check any sense that a corner is to, even, even within the context of Car Road. I mean, you know, three wins on the spin would tell you that corner has been turned after a wretched results base this season at home. But, you know, if if they stumble again in, the, in short order in, in the games ahead, then... That won't be the case. So I think everything we're discussing now is it looks like they've pivoted in a positive direction um, and there's more positivity now certainly around this group inside the camp and also outside it with the fan base undoubtedly. But it's, you know, the sample is too small really to say that that, that we are now full steam ahead and it's not will they get in the playoffs. It's not if, it's when they get in the playoffs and then they'll, they'll probably emerge through the playoff mix. I think we, we still need to see a little bit more and we're talking about adversity, you can guarantee there'll be plenty of adversity they'll have to face at Millwall um, because that is a team who, who do look like they're on a crest of a wave. So, you know, I think we're going to find out a hell of a lot about David Wagner, this group of players, and what lies in store the rest of this season um, this time next week. Yeah, and I, and I think I think you're spot on in a few points there. And, and I mentioned it earlier, it, it's, a, well, it's a very small block of evidence that we've got, but it's just a slight feeling and suggestion, and the numbers show that as well that they're beginning to uh, sort of turn those trends around, those negative trends. And, and, and it's, it is a gradual, it's not a rapid sort of, um, uh, sort of linear descent, I suppose. It's, um, it's a little bit more gradual, a little bit more slight, um, but we are seeing it. And that, compared to what we were seeing, I think is, is, is a real positive. And, and I guess, Sam, if you wanted to sort of capture that in one player, Gabriel Sarra, it feels to me over the, over the past eight games, I don't know your view, but... It certainly feels like he's he's been Norwich City's best best performer at the minute. It seems to have found a role in a system that suits him, the clarity that David Wagner provides. But he's he is uh, firing on all cylinders at the moment. He's producing some excellent performances. Yeah, there have been a few times actually when I thought today isn't his day, and when he's tried things that haven't quite come off. And I think that was the case today in the first fifteen minutes or so. But 
the form he's in at present, you can rely on him in every game to produce two or three moments of real quality that probably allow one of his attacking teammates some space in the opposition box. And that was the case today. Obviously, a fantastic goal. Um, reminded me a little bit of Marco Stieperman and some of the moments he produced from the edge of the box in that 2018-19 season. And um, I think he's solved a few problems for Norwich, actually, because not only did they look sort of weak and, and lack athleticism in the in midfield in the Premier League. They also have lacked creativity in a serious way at times this season. And I think he's contributed to the solution to both of those problems. His running stats, as I'm sure Dean Smith would highlight, have, have been fantastic. He when when Smith highlighted that, I actually made a point for a few minutes in one game of actually watching him and he never stops and that's a real um strong characteristic and it really helps with the amount of movement that he provides with Norwich trying to advance the ball up the pitch, it really, really helps. And I think he's able to get up and back as the midfielders do need to in Wagner's system. Obviously, sometimes he plays with a number 10, sometimes with a flat out front two. But in both of those scenarios, there's a lot of onus on the midfield two to get through plenty of work. And he's able to do that on the physical side. And then you look at the technical side and the creative side and... They were a team at times this season who looked totally devoid of ideas and they would be comfortable passing in a horseshoe around the back. But they really, really struggled to get the ball forward and to break lines and to find passes into the attacking players where they could do some damage. And he's really, really good at that. He's forged some relationships with players in the team that are capable of damaging opposition defenders. You feel like when he's got the ball in the opposition half, he's got the ability to find passes into... Um, any area of the pitch really he's got a really good range of passing and he showed that with a fantastic pass for Erno Hernandez today um, absolutely perfect pinpoint found the winger who was quite unfortunate actually to um, to see his volley clip the outside of the post as it went wide um, but he's just got so many aspects and for somebody who is being questioned quite a lot because there's a really really significant championship um price tag on his head you know when you think about the fact that he's the championship spending a minimum of six million pounds on him was a real gamble this summer and the financial situation Norwich find themselves in highlight that and underline that really so I think there's been a lot of pressure on him to perform but to be able to um, adapt to the league in probably three or four months as he has especially given he came to Carrow Road with um, quite a significant injury I think is is really impressive and he'll be really pleased with his performances. For me, he's a, a perfect player for David Wagner's midfield and Wagner will certainly feel lucky that he was at the club when he arrived. So yeah, a, a really good run of form for Sarah. I think he solves plenty of problems and you know, as it's been with the team throughout the season, you hope this isn't just a a short burst of form, but a consistent showing of the player that he can be and the player that Norwich bought for £6 million because um, now you can really see probably what they saw when they were watching Sao Paulo and they were watching him in that midfield um, because I think he can add add a lot. And for me, um, not to be presumptive, but the goal in the end is to, to survive in the Premier League. I think he's at least got the potential, if not being at this level already, to, to compete at that top level. So... Yeah, plenty of good things about Gabriel Sara. I think we saw signs of it early in the season, but he's really blossoming now and, and really showing the player that I think Norwich fans and probably those inside the club knew that he could become. His, his game's really changed, actually, over the course of the last eight games under Dean Smith, and he did highlight he did highlight the running stats a lot, but his game was a lot more about trying to, to be... Uh, the deep runner beyond at times and there were points where he'd advance beyond the striker and it was all about trying to get on the end of crosses and, and, and sort of utilising space in that way. I think under David Wagner he's a lot more controlled. The, the onus is on him to kind of try and wrestle control of games and we see a lot more of his of his passing than perhaps we did under under Dean Smith as well. It's a different role. It's a role that uh, he said a couple of weeks ago that he's almost having to be walked through and coached by by David Wagner. But it's a, it's a role that seems to be really suiting him. And, and, and interestingly, Pad, I spoke to Kenny McLean after the game and really singing his praises. I think he, he, he described him as um, pretty much a complete midfielder. Um, was kind of asked about his role and, and, and said that uh, he's he is kind of looking the way he's looking at the moment because he's playing alongside Gabby Sarah and... Um, he described a complete package is, is the word that he used and he also said on today that Norwich got got a, sort of grasped the game when Gabby Sarah grasped the game I mean it's it's 
really high praise that he is drawing at the moment. And I know you, you you asked David Wagner about him on Friday as well, and and he was also keen to to kind of highlight how much progress he's made. So we are, as 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 Sam said, beginning to see the player that I think a lot of Norwich fans kind of felt that they'd signed and for all of the criticism that their recruitment has taken he looks like a real tick in the box doesn't he in terms of a real find um for for David Wagner his system but but also for for Norwich more widely he does at the moment yeah um but again you know Bristol I, I thought he was very ragged in his play and Wigan as well and it wasn't that they're not a million miles away those games so but what he has done this week particularly uh really put his stamp on it um, and what I like, and you referenced it absolutely spot on, Connor, is that playing in that role, deeper role, the, he's got the game in front of him, you know, and he's got more time as well. I think that's a, a point as well that that in those pockets where him and McLean operate in front of the back four, that's probably the one of the less frenetic parts of a championship football pitch. And um, with a bit of time on the ball, it is technique is there for all to see that the passing range, as you say, is uh, is excellent. And um, and I think. Kudos to to Wagner. He's he's you know he has deconstructed that pretty quickly and realised there is a a malleable sort of midfield talent here that it has the capacity to play in a role that they didn't really have or certainly didn't have anybody who was suggesting they could operate in that role at this level under the previous head coach. But um, really exciting that we're only sort of eight games in, eight league games into this relationship, and you can already see the rate of progress and what he could now achieve with a considered run in that part of the pitch in this team alongside McLean. And I think that point does need to be reiterated. You know, Wagner talked both on Friday when asked and after the game today um, about the partnership. You know, he talked about they're the heartbeat of the team. You know, when they are on it, then Norwich will be on it more often than not. Um, And again today, I think he called them the perfect combination. So in terms of a blend, you know, we talk about central defensive pairings, forward areas you look for partnerships maybe in the wide areas increasingly in the modern game you need partnerships there between your full back your wing back and the player further forward but absolutely pivotal that you've got two players there who understand each other's games and I think McLean's probably doing himself a disservice because he, yeah. he, he his passing range is very underrated and also you know he has that athleticism as well that you know if Zara does break forward as he did on occasion today and linked with you know his ex San Paolo teammate Marquinhos particularly in that first half. McLean has that experience and the responsibility just to sit in. So I think those two as a pairing as well as individuals, they're bringing the best out of each other but also bringing the best out of this Norwich team at the minute. And um, yeah, no, in terms of the recruitment, I think I'm, I'm sure when it wasn't quite looking this way with Zara, um, there was maybe one or two questioning you know what had they seen? Why did they go so so aggressively into that territory and and pay for Norwich in the current climate? A lot of money, but you now see a, a player who, to take Sam's point, is is better than Championship grade, and um, hopefully it's with Norwich because I think the way he's going, the way he's adapted now in such short order, you know he will go on and, and play at the highest level in this country. So you know we all hope that's in a Norwich shirt, don't we? Yeah, and twenty two as well, which exactly. is which is pretty frightening, really, for, for for the level of performance that we're seeing at the moment. And you're right, Kenny McLean doing a a really good job as well. Um, and in terms of the way they like to press and the intensity and uh, his work against the ball, but also his his work with the ball, he's also someone who I think is reaping the the benefits of a a different, more defined role under under David Wagner. And and that midfield at the moment. Um, has been so good and it feels hard and, and you know we saw Jakob Sorensen at, at left back today Marcelino Nunez has, has taken a more advanced role it feels difficult to see sort of beyond any injury how that how that pairing gets kind of displaced between now and and the end of the season um just on while we're on the the Brazilian theme Sam uh Marquinhos he, he came in made his his Norwich City debut today it was um mixed I, w- I would say I think there was some some issues in in open play, but a goal and an assist. So in terms of pure output, it's a, a pretty good day's work for him. Yeah, definitely. And those are the reasons why you get these attacking players. It's not so that you can remember what went wrong. It's so that they can produce the key moments that ultimately define football games. And Marquinhos will be really pleased that he was able to pop up with that goal. Um, not probably the trickiest finish of his life, but 
you know, he was in the right place at the right time and it's definitely missable, um, that chance, as as I think we've seen at times from different players this season. So, yeah, it was a good finish, a good start to his career in yellow and green and overall a positive, but I'd still say there were, as you said, some signs that he's maybe not quite where David Wagner would want him to be. He didn't look totally fit to me and that may be why he was withdrawn um, fairly early in the second half. I think defensively he struggled to keep up with Callum O'Dowder a little bit. There were times when I felt the Cardiff winger got down the line a little bit too easy and probably Marquinhos should have been back um, slightly quicker. But obviously, uh, as Wagner highlighted in his post-match, um, he's not played much football for Arsenal's first team. He's come to Norwich and had a muscle injury immediately and not really been able to play for his first month in yellow and green. So there are some mitigating factors and you hope that he can come through those in pretty short order because at the end of the day, this was a short-term loan who was brought in to have an impact on Norwich um, very quickly and an impact on their goal of, of playoff contention and trying to get back to the Premier League. David Wagner spoke also a lot about the areas of, he get, of the game he needs to improve upon, but that shouldn't really be Norwich's focus, to be honest. Arsenal will hope that he benefits from Wagner's coaching and that there are areas of his game he improves um, while he's in Norfolk but he's been brought in now for a period of I don't know how, how many games they've got left is it 12 or something like that um, but yeah I think that's in that ballpark and um, he, they want him to make an impact now so for me it's slightly worrying that he maybe wasn't quite up to the pace especially considering the fact that Christos Jolis probably has missed out on game time because of his own lack of, of fitness so hopefully Wagner will find ways to get him back up to speed as quickly as possible. There's now a, a whole week between games, of course, and I think that will be beneficial for the likes of Jolis and, and Marquinhos and maybe even Tamer Bookie and Josh Sargent, who are obviously coming back from injury. Um, but yeah, I think there were positives and negatives to take from today's performance. He certainly looks like a player who's capable, at least at, at championship level. After all, he was signed by Arsenal, who are currently top of the Premier League and they feel that he can contribute in future. I think he showed the signs of a a good left foot, really good technique, probably shies away from his right foot slightly more than you'd like, but um, certainly a player who can have an impact on Norwich for the rest of the season if if he can iron out those kinks that currently mean he probably wouldn't be starting ahead of Kieran Dow. And I know that's in some ways a moot point because Dow is out until um, the second half of April, but for me, Norwich want a player who can at least the level is is that is that they can at least compete for a, a starting place when the whole squad is fit, and I think he probably can, but he needs a little bit of work. I found it especially interesting when Wagner referenced post match the fact that they actually considered the connection with Gabriel Sara um, when they thought about bringing him in on loan. They obviously played together at Sao Paulo and had success together. Marquinhos was a regular fixture in their team at a really really young age. Um, and he's spoken about how they've sort of been together a lot at training and in and around the training ground and how Sarah's helped him along. So perhaps um, the the midfielder's improvement is partially to do with that company and that um, familiar face, and hopefully he can have a similar effect on Marquinhos in terms of the, the form that they've both enjoyed. But I feel like I've maybe been slightly negative about a player who's come in and scored on his debut because I think there were more positive signs the negative, but you'd like to see him slightly more involved in future. I think. I don't think you're negative. I think that was. I think that was relatively balanced and fair. Um, Pab, one one player I wanted to ask you about on the other side is Onel Hernandez, who uh, who got an assist today. He should have had another after after playing. Uh, he did play Alameda through, didn't he? I've, I've not. Yeah, made that yeah. Was, was, I thought it was Hernandez. Might have yeah. yeah, but <laughs> might it might have he might have played Alameda through in, in in the second half when he missed the opportunity. Yeah, I'm, I haven't seen it back yet, so I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure, um, but. We're beginning to see quite improvement from him as well in terms of output. I mean, it was a, a, a really good assist today. It's a lot of criticism maybe for his his struggles and his erraticness in the final third and that inconsistency to find players. But it was a, a really... He, he kind of manufactured a yard of space for himself really well so he could pull that ball back to Marquinhos. And it does feel like... And, and again, it's probably not over a full 90. I think we're seeing him in bursts and, and kind of, um, yeah, bursts within games. But... 
he is contributing under David Wagner. He is improving and upping his, his output a little bit. I guess the goals are maybe the, the, the factor that's, that's alluding, even last week at Wigan. I know he's very quiet, but if Norwich were going to do anything, it kind of felt like it was going to come through him. So what, what have you made of him in, in the last kind of period of, of games or so? Because he's, he, he has started a lot of games as well. And that's probably helped him, yeah, in terms of trying to find that in his game, a bit more consistent output element. Um, no, I've, I've been quite impressed with him in this period because he has been a bit erratic in terms of his performances whenever he's came in to side. But, you know, you could go back maybe to the, the one of the title winning seasons when he played regularly. But I, I think thereafter, his Norwich career has been kind of the story of kind of impact sub opportunities and he's now found a coach and maybe just an opportunity on the left hand side of that midfield to really put a marker down that said he's going to have to maintain his levels because obviously Jolis is now firmly in Wagner's thoughts um, scored an excellent goal midweek against Birmingham uh, was lively again today could have scored again today um, there was that one that rebounded from Pukki that it just couldn't adjust his feet quick enough um, and that's that's an intriguing matchup, and that's what Wagner wants because that will drive up performance levels all over the pitch um, but no I mean that, he was very unlucky with the one we've already touched on which was his wrong foot to be fair where he's caught Zara's diagonal flush on his right tried to cushion it inside the far post and just clipped the base of the outside of the, the far post um, very unfortunate um, but what he did for, for the Marquinhos assist that's what you want from your wide player get to the ball and cut the ball back into a dangerous area Um that rashness that too often has sort of in, infected his game in the final third, I think we're seeing less and less of that. And again, you have to probably pay tribute to, to Wagner, who who feels from from the outside looking in to be one of those coaches who, who very big on the individual, sort of dissecting an individual's game within obviously the template of a, a system that he wants to play. But he's very big on improving individual performance. He's talked about speaking to Max Ahrens at length, um, Adam Eder, he, the list goes on. And... And I'm sure he's made it quite clear what he wants from Hernandez and and the the sort of benchmarking that he needs to produce and the fact he's starting every game would tell you that he's he's meeting those criteria. So um, yeah, excellent today um, in in the key moments and uh, you know that's that's going to be quite an interesting one to follow as the season reaches a climax. Whether it's him holding off Jolis or whether Zolis uh, elbows him aside because uh, you know. Either or, basically what Wagner wants from his wide players is quite clear. That output, you know, in goals and assists. And if you can't deliver that, then you're probably going to be out of the side because it just feels now he's he's bringing a group together who, you know, he has options, even with the injuries that he's trying to dice or, 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 or step step through, that, that on any given weekend now or midweek, he can put players on the park and interchange it uh, and still maintain that upward curve. So, um yeah, no credit to Arnel. He's, you know, I've probably been quite critical of him in the past in terms of uh, I just felt you know his decision making was always off. But by, by and large, you know he'd have you know the, the odd game here or there or the odd moment, but that would only frustrate you more because you know he's got that in his game and at his age now. I don't think he's probably, you know, he's he's probably as as good as he's going to be. You know, he's he's not twenty two like Zara who's got it all ahead of him. So. You thought, well, maybe he's not going to be able to add that calmness to his play in the key moments, but um, we're certainly seeing it currently under Wagner. But again, like Norwich, more broadly, we need to see it now between now and the end of the season. Just watched it back, and it was definitely Arnold that, that made the pass. So my sincerest apologies. I thought it was. I thought it was, that, and it wasn't just you. There was some uh, discussion about it in the mix zone afterwards yeah, as yeah. well. So um, new contract for for Hernandez. Would 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 you in 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 the position that, that he's in? He wants to stay. He made that very clear after Coventry. Yeah, absolutely. It's not my money, so I can say whatever I want. <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, I mean, particularly if they fall short and it's another season of Championship football, then Onel Hernandez on a new deal is a, is a no brainer. Kieran Dow? Yes, I'd have Dow as well, no doubt about it. Um, and that's really unfortunate. And you just hope, despite the positivity around today's performance with Mark Ineos and the midfield more generally, that that doesn't really come back to really hit them. Because, and Wagner, I thought was spot on Friday when he was talking about the injury. He said, look, he hasn't hit the mark in every game, but over the piece, he's really took a step forward. And one would probably, if you were to pick three players who, who've really improved or up their levels since Wagner came in, he he would have to be in that top three, I think. So that is a blow. But contractually, yeah, get him and, and uh, Armel signed on the dotted line. Your only concern, maybe less so now with Dowell, but 
as much as there's from a Norwich perspective, but these players, if they continue to perform, they're putting themselves in the shop window, and uh, you know it might not be as straightforward. Maybe with Onel less so, but, but with a player like Dowell, if he'd continued on this trajectory, out of contract in the summer, free agent would have been a very highly desirable commodity. So, yeah, plenty of water to flow into that bridge, I think. Yeah, the Wembley single's still on, isn't it, for Kieran Dowell? If he, uh, if he scores, if he scores Remind that goal, me what, what, final. what's going to happen there, Connor? Uh, well, I what, what was it I said? If I, I said if he scores at Wembley and Norwich win, you would do I a dance. You would do a dance and sing. Well, I'll I'll do the uh, I'll get I'll do a rendition of the Get Down on It song, and do some dancing as well. I, do, I know I don't remember yeah, dancing being involved. part of it. I don't I don't remember that. I don't remember any dancing being involved. Sam, before we uh, we move on to to the the fortnight uh, that is to come, it would be remiss of us not to speak about that Marcelino Nunez goal. Um, in midweek, well, it was a, he was quite quiet today actually, but I think we'll forgive him after after what he produced. I mean, that was that was a real stunner, wasn't it? In 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 terms of uh, the quality, the distance, the technique, the audaciousness, it was some strike. Yeah, it was one of those where across the stadium, I think everybody's just looking at each other, open mouthed, and having spoken to Max Aaron's after that game, it sounds like. That was a reaction from the players as well. Um, I think you've seen the, the great goals that it's been compared to. I feel a little bit for Alex Tetty because I think he probably deserved a shout in the uh, Nunez versus Halston sort of I get debate. Yeah, but I guess they're getting compared because of they're quite similar in the way they were scored, right? I feel like the technique on Tetty's is quite similar to Nunez, actually. How they sort of... But it's it, but they were both cleared from a corner yeah, and they yeah, were yeah. both so I guess that's probably why if he's if he's yeah. if he's ran onto it I guess it's probably the Teddy one is getting compared to and not the House one. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, no, I do. Um, I I do understand the the comparisons, but I just wanted to uh, get a shout in there for Teddy who, who actually returned to Carrow Road today. So a shame. not that anyone would have known about it <laughs> yeah, <but>. because of <laughs> the the, uh, the PA issues, obviously. But um, yeah, I think it was a a great moment and probably one that Nunez really, really needed, to be honest. Um, It's been a few months since he's actually put in a consistently good performance and the way that he was after the game and his mood um, sort of afterwards and, and in recent times... You do wonder if he hadn't scored that first one, does he go and score that second one? Uh, and I think he's he's really underlined the fact that he can be a massive player for Norwich going forward. The fact that he's not been totally on it today, I do agree that maybe we, we need to uh, cut him some slack after that fantastic goal on Tuesday. But the fact that he wasn't quite on it today perhaps underlines in microcosm what his struggles have been at Norwich. And he's a player who's played for basically a year straight, so... You do feel for him um, in a way and hopefully once the summer comes and he's got that break, he's got some time to work on that consistency. But he's just an incredibly incredibly talented player and you saw from the technique on that volley and I don't think anyone's ever been in any doubt. He's got the talent to go on and, and produce at a really, really high level. But from Gabriel Sarah being able to string the number of good performances together that he has, you've seen what it takes to actually be praised as a sort of high-level player in this Norwich squad. Um, but, uh, yeah, a really, really exciting time for Marcelino Nunez. Very happy for him. And um, I think underlined by the fact that I've... Uh, <laughs> my explanation of the term lovely jubbly and what it means in British culture was printed in a Chilean newspaper this week. So I think that's... Uh, that explains how how excitable Marcelino Nunez is, and what a big sensation he is in his country, and and there's a reason for that, and hopefully he can continue to show why in a Norwich shirt. So it's, it's a good uh, it's a good line to describe this week, actually. Lovely jubbly, isn't it? Yeah. Um, good old Del boy, uh, Paz. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but if I was Marcelino Nunez and I'd have scored a goal like that, I'd have gone straight down the tunnel. I'd have got on a plane to Chile. I'd have put my feet up because I'm not topping that. I don't think. I think I think I'd have called quits on my career, but that's probably why I'm not a professional footballer. Um, Sam said it was, it was a more difficult afternoon for him today. I mean, it's the first time that he started two games. I, I don't have it off the top of my head, so I don't know, but f- certainly for a while. Um, some strike. So it, it, given that, that Sam's mentioned it, it would probably be remiss of us not to not to ask. Halson or Nunez, what, what one are you going for as, as the better strike? Johnny H. I'm, I'm with you on this, actually. Yeah, no, majestic. Um, it's the height, I think, isn't it, yeah, that, that, yeah. He, that he connects with the ball? Because that, no, that one really loops in the air. Yeah, exactly, and um, I mean that. Just the arc on the house and one, and where it ends up in the goal. I mean, don't get me wrong, we're we're splitting hairs here, aren't we? But um, 
No, if I had to, yeah, if I had to plump, it would be. But I don't think Sam agrees with us. Ridiculous pro house and bias from you on it. <laughs> no, on this one, I genuinely do. To be fair, but I think the uh, the regular battles between him and McLean in uh, in our debates of of hardened me against Johnny House, unfortunately. But no, you know, um, I was there for that that Forest goal, and that was probably the best goal of. I've ever seen uh, in person. So to be fair on that one, I think we can we can, you know, say that I'm being unbiased and and fair. Although the Nunez goal, I think I probably feel um, I feel more like I could reproduce the Nunez goal, which both uh, explains why. Do you, I don't. I'm not saying I, I could, don't. I'm not saying I could reproduce it. I'm saying out of his and Housen's, I probably feel. With a hundred attempts, I'd probably score more times trying to do the Nunez one. I don't think you'd but, score any. Well, that's that's you've not seen me playing I'm in the. That's gonna have to be some video. <laughs> you, I'm gonna have to lock that one up. Yeah, let's do that. Get me down, Eat whatever, part. whatever. Yeah, eating part. I'll go down there. I'll give me a hundred a hundred attempts, and I'll uh, see how that gets on. See see if I can pass that as three hours of my working day. Whatever that, <laughs> that happens, it feels unlikely. If but, anybody um, wants to see that, put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. I'll happily do it. I'll happily do it. I, I, I don't think I'd score any, uh, to be honest. I thought you thought you backed yourself as a technique player. Not, not, yeah. not on the quality of either of those strikes. I, I don't, I don't think you, you can, you can replicate either. I think but out of a hundred, I can score one. The house and one, I couldn't score. I, exact carbon they're... copy. You'll go and one. Yeah. Not, Nunez. not just, not just you shank one in the opposite <laughs> corner from the same distance. No, no. I think I could, I could make it look like Nunez once out of a hundred, but I don't think I could. Out of given a hundred attempts, I could never. I could never um, do Housen's one. I don't think. To be fair, neither of you have seen me playing football, so I could be, I could be unbelievable levels, and you wouldn't know about it. You're sat here, mate. You're not playing at Carrow, <laughs> so that would indicate you're probably not. Um, it's it's a big it's a big week or big couple of weeks, really, Paddy. I mean, we referenced Millwall. Uh, they are unbeaten in eleven at the Den. They they, they beat Alex Neil Stoke one 0 today away from home. Gary Rowett's really got them firing, but actually in that form table since David Wagner took over, they're, they're, they've actually taken fewer points than Norwich. I think they've taken fourteen, and Norwich have taken sixteen. So splitting hairs slightly, but that their home form seems formidable in particular. That's where Norwich City have got to go. It feels like for all of this kind of positivity that we've spoken about, and we both mentioned it at the start, this feels like the time that we're going to properly see this Norwich City side and its credentials and whether it, whether those kind of statistics that they have kind of turn around a little bit, whether that, that's anything more substantial or whether it is just games against teams at the wrong end of the table and, and kind of the fixture list being a little bit kind to them. So feels like a, a, a big week but but I'd also throw Sunderland after Millwall in as well as, 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 as and package it as a, a big fortnight really for Norwich City's playoff hopes yeah but I think we need to yeah I, I would literally just zero in on the Millwall game because I think if they get a result there then a- any result any result yeah any result I think you know over these next two if they take four from six I think that keeps them in the mix mm-hmm. and they've navigated two potentially very difficult looking fixtures which would would answer some of the questions inevitably around this group and their record against whatever makeup you want to make of the top six this season. It's it's wretched, um, but their Caro record was wretched, and, and Wagner's set about that one with gusto. So it would answer a lot of questions. I think that still remain around this group of players. If off the back of two eminently winnable Caro games, but they delivered to give them the credit, they went to Millwall um, on a run like that under a manager. You know, we're talking about eight games, really. Wagner, Rowett has been there how many years now? He's he's built from the bottom up, doing a tremendous job to get them in or around it because I don't think resources-wise they would be anywhere near that if you rank the championship table in terms of the the, the, the money they can throw at it. So he's, he's really organically done an unbelievable job and they probably, Burnley aside, would this would be the, the most formidable test on current form, I think. So... And worth pointing out, they got a draw, didn't they? They came back to draw with Burnley at the Den only yeah. last midweek. And beat Sheffield United there as well. I think yeah. they, they, they took, uh, what would it have been, four points from those two games, yeah. which not many teams have, no. have done against those two this season. So really, you know, this for for how this season could go from here, I, th- I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that it, you know, it could be pivotal, really. And worth pointing out, I think I'm right in saying I saw... On social this week, there's like 2,800 Norwich yeah. fans already. Yeah. You know they've they've snapped up those tickets, got both of the tiers. If anybody knows where the away fans are configured at Millwall, beyond that goal, um, and my mind does go back to the first championship winning 
season under Farker where Norwich went there and Pukki was good that day, scored. I think Zimmerman towering header at the near post in front of those fans and and you know, to come through that type of test is what a promotion winning side does. So yeah, the countdown is already underway and even Wagner unprompted uh, threw in about how much he was looking forward to going to Millwall next weekend. So Probably Feels not slightly too many, contradictory. Not too many. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we don't want to hop back to the past. But uh, yeah, no, it's it feels big. It is big. And if Norwich can stand up and return with something, um, then you start to think, okay, yep, yeah, this is possible now. Whereas at the minute, there's still too many imponderables. It, it's still more based on optimism, um, which is fair enough. But you know that would be tangible, irrefutable. Evidence. If you could go to a team who were probably the form side in the championship, Burnley aside, and get a result, then um, you know because you know to bring this full circle, we spent a little bit of the pod today talking about adversity and that being affected by adversity. In Wagner's view, there will be periods next Saturday where they really will have their backs against the wall, and and we'll probably learn a little bit more about, as I say, Wagner, this group of players, and what they can achieve this season. Yes, and and I guess Sam, the the other point, and again, Paddy touched upon it there. Their, their record against the the top six is pretty wretched this season. They did actually beat Millwall, um, who were one of one of the teams that they did beat inside the the top six at the moment. Um, maybe the only one, possibly off the top of my head. I don't know what the current top six is. Luton are in it, aren't they? They lost to them twice. Blackburn they lost to twice. Middlesbrough they've lost to. Sheffield United they drew against, and Burnley lost against twice. So yeah, the only team in, in, inside the top six that they've beaten so far this season at Carrow Road. Although I think they had a few injuries at. Uh, on, on that occasion but also more more pertinently um, will only be the second team inside the, the top six that they've played um, under David Wagner's stewardship Burnley obviously being the other you look at the others Preston, Coventry who have done very well and are kind of closing the gap a little bit on the playoffs but still aren't in that mix and then obviously the, the run of games that they've had uh, with Wigan um, oh I've started so I've got to finish now no. Wigan, <laughs> Bristol City Hull, Birmingham and Cardiff have I missed one? I don't think I missed one um, so it feels kind of like a good gauge for where Norwich City are, but but also for the progress that they've made under David Wagner, I guess. It's it's probably, Burnley was a test, but in many ways probably transpired in the way that you would have expected given how they've done this season. So feels like possibly maybe the first proper proper test in terms of where Norwich City are comparatively to, to the teams in and around that top six race. Yeah, it feels like if Norwich are where they think they are and probably think they should be, it should be quite a a well contested quite a close match um i don't think Millwall will be on the same levels as burnley to be honest but then few championship teams are well obviously nobody in the championship at present is and few championship teams over recent years i think would would be able to compete with them um really closely so i think it's certainly more of a a good test of where norwich are um at the time we sort of diagnosed that burnley game as the big litmus test the big chance to assess whether um, Norwich had those promotion credentials but you have to look at it with the prism that we have now and say that Norwich weren't actually ever going to get those automatic promotion places when da- David Wagner took over it was probably already late, already too late at that time they want to be in the playoffs and Millwall are in the playoffs so it's probably an ideal test um from that standpoint, I'm sure David Wagner, as much as he says he's looking forward to it, won't be particularly excited to face Millwall. I think if he could have continued to face the sides battling relegation at Carrow Road, he probably would have done. And a away trip to um, one of the Championship's form sides um, with you know injuries in the team and having um, just established the momentum that they hope they would will hope to carry through the rest of the season. I'm not sure he would have picked this test at this time but there are positives going into it for them Millwall play in midweek against a strong Luton side who will certainly give them a run around and and, um, sort of get into them physically while Norwich don't have a a game in midweek that momentum as much as they wouldn't they'll they'll fear it ending almost as soon as it started it will be a good time in terms of the confidence for them to face Millwall so it's not all negative when you look at the fact that they're playing them But, of course, they have quality and they have um, a good, well-set-up championship team with a a manager who knows this league incredibly well and knows how to nullify teams with more quality. And I don't think it's unfair to suggest that Norwich on the ball probably have more 
talent than this Millwall team. Um, but you don't get to where they are in the league if they can't put the ball in the net and they can't defend properly. So um, it it will be a difficult one, but certainly winnable for me because with this squad that Norwich have, and especially with the momentum behind them that they have now, I'd say I suggest that all games apart from Burnley should be winnable and they should go into it feeling that they can win. So I think they will, um, and I think it will make for a good game as long as there's no um, grave error after eight minutes as there was against Burnley. We'll get more of a an accurate test, and I don't think people will speak about that enough when they talk about the Burnley result and how much that skewed almost the data if you're trying to assess where Norwich are. Um, so yeah, I, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how that is, but I don't think David Wagner, as much as he says he is, really does does want this test at this time because um, I think Norwich are just starting to build up some good momentum. But you look at it on the flip side and try and be positive about it. If they do win this game, how much does that galvanise that support and how much does that show these players that they are capable of competing at that top end of the table? And it would also mean twinning the home and away form successfully for the first time this season because they've been good at, at away from home and then almost as soon as they started to struggle on the road they've been good at Carrow Road it would be good to see them actually capable of producing results um, at both of those so now that they've got some momentum behind them in front of their home support if they can go and do it in front of the travelling fans who have given them so much this season um, I think it will add to that consistency and it will really be a massive boost for them. Yeah, it feels like a must-not-lose, perhaps, rather than, than a must-win at this stage. And then if they can then beat Sunderland at the Car- uh, Car- Road uh, a week later, it leaves them in a, in a very healthy state indeed. Uh, anything else, lads, from, from either of you that you, you'd like to mention, want to mention? Uh, Sam's lent forward. I appreciated forward. the PA system more today than I have in previous weird, times. Weird, wasn't it? It felt weird, it did. It mm. felt quite serene and quite calming. I saw somebody say... They felt like they'd been to a spa, which it did a little bit <laughs> to see them sort of uh, them knocking the ball around in the warm up. But um, no, me and Adam certainly missed some of the uh, the sort of club remixes that <laughs> happened happened to come on before kick off. I know you did as well, Connor. That's your sort of thing, isn't it? So um, yeah. yeah, look forward to them coming back, especially the Seven Nation Army remix, which is a, a fantastic addition to the the playlist. But um, no, I, I think it's come at a terrible time for the club, to be honest, given. They had Alfie Hewitt as a guest and Alex Tetty also returned, so quite unlucky on that front. But uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully it recovers and the um, sweet music returns to Norwich fans' ears by the time Sunderland roll into Carrow Road in a couple of weeks. Is that the next home game? Yeah. That, yeah, there you yeah go. If, you, if you think the Carrow Road playlist is uh, is painful, you should listen to when Adam Harvey's let loose on a car radio <laughs> on away trips. Because there's some, some interesting music that comes across there, which 11 o'clock at night on the way back from Wigan is... Uh, is sobering to say, say the least. So, Pad, any anything else? No, no I'm not going to add to anything no, to that. Yeah. No, if if all that's wrong at Gower Road is the PA system, then we'll take it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you very much for listening. Enjoy the rest of your week. Of course, we'll have plenty of well more analysis from from this game across our channels, but also build up to the trip to the capital next weekend. Our first London game of the season, which must be some sort of record, mustn't it? Uh, unless you include Watford, which isn't really. Is it really London? No, no, it's not really London. So it is the first London trip. I'm officially declaring it the first London trip. So, uh, yeah, uh, we will have all of that across our channels across this week. It's going to be a bit weird, isn't it, having a full week uh, without a midweek game? But uh, there we go. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll catch you again very, very soon. In the words of Marcelino Nunez, lovely jubbly.